beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed the Bible says, can a mother forget her suckling child? He said, even if a mother chooses to forget her suckling child, I will not forget you. He said, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just in one minute. We are going to hold our hands and speak and command the forces of death over this city. Remember, I told you at the beginning of the year that I saw this death happening. Lecture us. Hallelujah. It's not a thing to celebrate at all. And you must not be related to them. We don't care whether they are Christians, Muslims, it's irrelevant. Death is an enemy to everyone. Lift your voice and speak. You have authority. Command. Lord, we speak over this atmosphere. Hold hands together and pray. Something happens in the heavens when the church prays. Pray. Put yourself in the position of these family members and pray. Lord, we avert the spirit of death. Oh, death, where is your sting? We curse you in the name of Jesus. That spirit that steals away destinies. We break the curse of death. You are an enemy. We dispel your operation from this environment. We declare as ambassadors of the government of heaven, you shall not touch anyone. We place the mark of the blood upon everyone in this ministry. We place the mark of the blood upon everyone in this territory. We cause the spirit of death death by accident death by the hands of wicked men death by terrorism death as a result of premature exposure we authorize heaven to step in over the territory of Zaria this is our territory we legislate as ambassadors the lecturers of the institutions will not die. They will not die. We bless their families. We bring them over under the covering of the blood. Hallelujah. 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 The last prayer point. We are going to pray. The Bible says... The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity. You're going to pray for yourself and everybody you know and say in the name of Jesus, I bring my family and my loved ones under the covering of the blood. Go ahead and pray. You're walking, pray for your workers. You're an employer, pray for your employees. You're a student, pray for your colleagues. 
We refuse the news of untimely death. The Bible says with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation with long life. He didn't say will I give you. He said will I satisfy you. We command the shield of the blood and we revoke the oppressions of the spirit of death. We have no covenant with death. We have no agreement with death. We challenge you. We call you a spirit and we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I just feel led to ask to add one more prayer point. We're going to challenge the spirit of fear. There are many of us that cannot even travel around because you think will I die? You know, and all kinds of things. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Listen, 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 listen. Let me tell you something. Death is a spirit it can run away from certain people and you must become that kind of person are you listening to me you can't be moving around you have no covenant with death are you listening to me the bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side it said none shall harm you but with your eyes shall you see and and watch and see the reward of the wicked hallelujah talking about the angels he said they will bear you up on their wings so that you will not even dash your feet against the stone you are going to pray and say i challenge fear we challenge fear fear of traveling fear of moving around we challenge fear we are sons of light we are daughters of light we have no business with your fruitful works of darkness we command an immunity that follows the citizens of this kingdom we declare that we are immune we are men of understanding and we refuse to fear we command judgment upon the spirit of fear be gone from our camp be gone from our midst in the name of jesus the fear of death that puts men under bondage the bible says you will be blessed in your going out you will be blessed in your coming in come on pray in tongues just for a minute shake away the spirit of fear shake away the thoughts of death you shall leave he said let Reuben leave let Reuben leave although he has been cursed but let Reuben leave Lord we will leave we choose life we choose life we choose blessing hallelujah Say after me, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. Say, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day, nor the noisome pestilence. He didn't tell you there are no arrows flying around. He said, you shall not be afraid. In other words, it does not concern me. You must believe it. Hallelujah. Don't leave your house thinking and wondering and seeing every bike man moving let me tell you something brothers and sisters nothing just happens hallelujah i speak a very big parable to you nothing just happens this is why we are praying you must learn to interpret things from the lens of the spirit and you will see that beyond the activities that happen nothing just happens are you getting what i'm saying vehicles don't just crisscross themselves like that spiritual wickedness that move around to make sure they jeopardize the destinies of men but you know what to do hallelujah father we give you the praise 
We bless you because you are faithful. Thank you for tonight. Pray in one minute and say, Father, I have come again. Change me. I have come to hear. I've come to contact understanding. Hallelujah. Give us understanding, O oh Lord. We incline our hearts to your word. It will make us wise. Your word is giving us wisdom. Teaching us how to walk like gods upon the earth. And tonight, Lord, we expose our spirits to the light of your word. Let there be transformations. Let there be paradigm shifts, O God. Help us, empower us, challenge us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Walk around to ten people, hug them, tell them happy Valentine. happy valentine whether you know them or not happy valentine hallelujah god bless you please sit down once again we welcome everybody inside and outside there's a lot to do tonight we're still on our series on financial dominion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever more. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Strings, strings, strings. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Pray from your heart. It's a simple prayer. I love you forever. I love you forever. More than money. I love you More than power. Forever. More than Lord. faith. Declare your love for him on this day. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. One more time. Sing I love you, Lord. our love for you thank you for the privilege of access to light light that transforms light that builds light that changes lord in the name of jesus tonight we pray that you will help us we cry for the help of the spirit open our eyes to the secrets of kingdom wealth grant us access to light that will change us in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 35, 27. Mm. Last week, we started by talking a lot about, it was just an introduction. We ran through the course curriculum. What is all this on the screen? I thought we finished this whole Valentine thing. Please, let's get to work. No more distraction. It's time to concentrate. Psalm 35, verse 27.
Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. Last week I began sharing with us and I told us that it's very wasteful to give people informations that they are not prepared to receive. Hallelujah. They will not recognize it, they will not value it, and it will not be profitable unto them. And I did tell us last week that um, there are certain steps we need to take if we desire change and transformation in any area of our life, especially our finance. Number one, that we must recognize the need to be financially blessed. Hallelujah. You must see the need. You must see the evil of poverty. You must see the limitation that poverty and lack brings upon the body of Christ and even to the agenda of God. I told you that recognition creates a sense of responsibility. In fact, there is a whole book about recognition by Mike Murdoch. It's called The Law of Recognition. Recognizing the need breaks limitations so that you don't have limitations stopping you. And then it creates dissatisfaction. Hallelujah. And then the second point is that you go for knowledge. Having recognized that there is a need to be blessed, you go for knowledge. Hallelujah. And then number three, you take action. Consistent application of the things that you've heard. How many of us still remember all these things? Praise God. I'm just reviewing it quickly for the sake of those who were not here last week. If you were not here, the messages are available. Please get it and listen, listen and listen again. I don't know how many times I've listened to last week's message. And um, we discussed the concept of prosperity. And I, I said to us last week that prosperity comes from the word prosper. Remember? And it means what? To do well. Praise the Lord. To prosper means to possess a means, an ability, or power. Please, in this series, I want to be very, very slow, very straightforward. I don't want to bring any ambiguity. I just want us to get it as principle so that everyone will understand. Hallelujah. We don't just want a few people to understand. We want everybody to understand. It means to possess a means, an ability, or power to meet the needs of mankind, regardless of what those needs may be. And remember, we discussed five areas of prosperity. Can you remember? Number one, spiritual prosperity. Number two, mental prosperity. Number three, bodily prosperity. That's the prosperity of your health. Number four, financial prosperity. Number five, so I told us that for many people, listen, every time they talk about prosperity, they think money. Hallelujah. Now you can see that financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of kingdom prosperity. Now in the world system, they just say happiness, joy, and so on and so forth. You see a lot of that in business books, but everything we are discussing here is with a kingdom paradigm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. I told us that to be prosperous spiritually means to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom. So your degree of prosperity spiritually is not just measured by being born again alone or being filled with the Holy Spirit alone. The degree to which you are understanding the ways and the principles of the kingdom is one of the indices that we use to measure spiritual prosperity. And then finally, the degree to which you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. So when you say man is spiritually prosperous, you are not just saying that man is a church goer. No. That he understands the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two, mental prosperity. We said how that it culminates in the soundness of your mind. How much your mind is well developed and deployed. Remember I stressed last week and I'll stress it again. That Christianity does not make people fools. Are you getting my point? Christianity does not make people just relevant as far as heaven and kingdom things are concerned. Christianity helps people to add value to mankind here and now. It says you are the light of 
this system you give illumination and you say you are the salt of the earth you preserve and you add taste you add value so the church is relevant even in society we're not just relevant as far as speaking in tongues and falling down and getting up and this is one of the reasons why in many regions of this nation the church is not respected they are not seeing our socio-economic impact they are not seeing us affect various strata of society hallelujah i think i did a teaching there conquering cosmos also you can get the teaching where i told us that the gospel is not just a message it's not just tract it's an ideology taking the value system of the kingdom to the various mountains of human existence education politics and governance finance um religion and media arts and so on and so forth you can get the teaching hallelujah so your ability to train your mind to build yourself and the ability to be free from worry and fear how many of you know that there are so many people they are blessed but they are afraid of their wealth because they are wondering what if i die all this kind of mental torture is not mental prosperity you can be rich financially and be poor mentally praise the lord bible says the lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind number three bodily prosperity we are not completely prosperous if we remain in sickness and weakness and so on and so forth to be prosperous health wise it means to be free from sickness to be free from diseases to be free from infirmity and then it also means to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness all of these yokes curses all kinds of things that people inherit hallelujah you can be free from it and when you are free from that you are prosperous bodily the fourth one and that's going to be the subject of our discussion is financial prosperity say financial prosperity it means freedom from poverty freedom from lack there is a difference between poverty and lack and today we are going to see it hallelujah poverty is a state of um lack of productivity there is nothing you are doing completely and as a result of that you do not have the ability to add value whether by ignorance or demonic oppression or whatever it is and then there is nothing that you can exchange for any kind of material um, blessing but lack is a perpetual state of insufficiency right so someone who suffers lack you have but it's always not enough always it's not like there is nothing it's just always not enough hallelujah so financial prosperity is freedom from poverty freedom from lack and take note you must write this and the effects that come with them there is an effect that poverty does to the life listen if poverty was neutral there will be no need to attack the issue of poverty are you getting what i'm saying that means if poverty did not cause anything to anybody it did nothing just neutral like the air we would not pay any attention to the issue of poverty but we are we are taking the issue of poverty personal because of what it causes to our lives our families the society and the advancement of the kingdom at large hallelujah praise god it also means having abundant financial supplies i'm giving you the definition of financial prosperity having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it if you do not have a means to replenish and sustain you are not rich it doesn't matter what you have hallelujah praise the lord so it's not enough to have abundant financial supply anybody can dash you money are you getting me now any well-wisher can love you and dash you money you can inherit wealth for instance 
but the ability to replenish it and sustain that flow is what makes you financially prosperous everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it's our time we arise it's our season everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it says arise and shine for your light is come tonight your light is coming in the name of jesus number five relational prosperity that's the last index for or dimension of prosperity in the kingdom having quality relationships that give you opportunities to express love to express care to improve yourself to share and to impact lives you must have an opportunity to bless people you must have an opportunity to interact to be a blessing to people there are many people who are financially prosperous but relationally they are very poor they walk alone they have no friend nobody to bless nobody can say it's because of this person i was blessed today hallelujah so that kind of money that kind of blessing that at the end of the journey of your life please bring some more people if there are more people they can just come and sit at least they can leave the front rows they can just share maybe a few of them or a few of you some of the leaders your leaders you can just go there so that some people can come to the front hallelujah few people who have the opportunity please come and sit down praise God how many of you lift please look at me how many of you have seen people who you know maybe in their lifetime maybe now they're in their old age they were blessed but they didn't lift anybody have you seen people like that they didn't bless anybody nobody went to school because of them they didn't feed anybody they didn't help the poor there are people like that and so maybe while they were working nobody got a job because of them they didn't bless anybody some of them were politicians their environments were not developed and these people come down and in their own age they are left alone because they did not invest in the life of anyone relational prosperity is so important because by and large in your life that's one of the things that will matter are you getting me there are some people who will never be poor in this life because of the those who have been raised and lifted because of them hallelujah for instance my children will never suffer in this life again you see that whatever price i've paid for them even if you hate me you will love them one day you will just look at them i'm sure maybe my daughter will be made head girl you know all this kind of solidarity whether she's qualified or not see there are you can create a a platform for generational blessings look at what we inherited from our parents praise god they didn't do anything they just produce enemies and you just got up and your uncle said you are the son of who you say i'm the son of this person you say that's right because of something that happened when you were not there that means relationships matter are you getting my message now your your quality of relationship with there are some things that you will get for free on account of relationship hallelujah some of us because of the relationships that we are making with certain people here now you may never need to pay for certain things in your life hallelujah praise the lord 
one day someone will come to a showroom to buy the car and maybe it's Ken that is the owner of the showroom ah Sam I remember you he said come in the inner one not that one outside there is the inner one the holy the holy of holies and he says please pick anyone he says see it's been a while and Sam is so blessed that when he takes it, he will go back and deposit money in his account and say it's a seed. So it's not a product of insufficiency. There is a realm like that. Poor people never know there is a realm like that, but there is. Hallelujah. So as you're sitting down right now, I want you to imagine your two, three, four, five children standing and saying daddy you better hear what they are saying we are coming <laughs> today is valentine love love means responsibility yeah. hallelujah don't ever let your children look at you one day and say what happened is it that you didn't hear what others were what happened and you know we are preserving all these messages in the future they will play it and you will see yourself when you were small your child will see you and say, I thought you said you, you were not born again then. That's you there. Why are we still broke? You know, then our parents lied to us. Some of them said they took first all through. Some of them said all kinds of things. Eventually we said, this, your story is not connecting. You know? Why are we still suffering like this? <laughs> parents, we're sorry. relational prosperity now look at me for those of you who can choose to neglect quality relationships i'm just this is not a discussion but i just feel it's important i point it because there are certain people that have this disdain and disregard for people you're not as fine as me you don't speak english as me you are not doing this. I'm wearing a designer's. You are wearing something else. Praise the Lord. And we create all of this stratification. Tonight, God is speaking to you. This is your first message tonight. Repent quickly. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something. That sister you see sitting down, she may have only one dress, but there is something happening inside her. The Bible says the vision in the end, it said, though it tarries, it will not speak at the beginning, but in the end it will speak. This is why we, I respect and I honor people so much, including these children. Some of you just look at them and nod. No. Value relationships. Value relationships. Many of our parents are crying for help today and there's nobody to help them because they neglected everybody. Some of them were the only ones to go to school and they turned and looked at the illiterates and said, you are not my class. And then the tables turned. This life. Everybody has his shell. The Bible says time and chance is a mystery that happens to all men. So whether you take advantage of your opportunity or not, God is just to turn the table. And one day it will get to somebody you've been laughing at. And maybe when you met the person, the person was a drunkard. But by the time the table would have reached, you would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, with sufficient knowledge to take advantage of that opportunity. Value relationships. Some of you, you cannot keep friends for five, five days. You are fighting with everybody. You just believe everybody has a problem and you won't adjust. Hallelujah. There are many of us that will not forgive people that hurt us since they were in secondary school. You just turn and you saw the person sitting in Koinonia and said, God, what is this person doing here? Because when you rise, see, if you don't believe in people when they are nothing, when they rise, they will forget about you too. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Relationships. And they brought a crippled man who dash monkey banana? Who would take that crippled man to the, to the palace? Relationships. Everybody say relationships. Relationships can give you what money may not give you. There are people on account of relationships, they got jobs without interview. You've been seeing your roommate because they are humble. You don't know who their father is. You're just picking against everybody and feeling your this and that. And one day you may go to their house and find somebody there. 
that your own father has been trying to access his office. See, let me tell you, relationships are powerful. This is a very powerful message. I believe God just wants me to drop this right now. When I see old women and very old men, the question I ask is, where are their children? Two, where are their friends? Because they had an opportunity to take advantage of their youthful life. Are you following me now? Many of them did not take advantage of it. And a man, a man at 75, coming to move around in a house and say he wants to be a gate man. I said it last week. For 75 years, where were we, his friends? No, it's, it, it's impossible that all his friends will be failures. You mean nobody could help him? That is coming now to be a gate man to take five or ten thousand. I'm not insulting the occupation. Are you getting my point? I'm saying that there, there is always opportunity. Many of us now are begging for things we would get for free because we neglected people years ago that are in position to bless us now. There are many of us, maybe if you would have seen me 15 years ago or so, some of you will look and say all kinds of things no value people now especially when they are hearing what you are hearing too look let me tell you the word can give you an inheritance never conclude on any man who is getting revelation hallelujah praise the lord there are many wealthy people today there are people in the presidency there are multi bill gates had classmates true or false all of these wealthy people had classmates. Some of those classmates are still begging today. And Bill Gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in their lifetime. Is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them? They are giving millions to charity. Can they help their friends? Neglect. This is a message to someone this night. Today is Valentine's Day. Let me just press it in. Some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have love people when you see us say turn around hug one another and all of this we're doing it for a reason we're doing it for a reason everybody say opportunity remember my message on activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny help us cherish very valuable relationships I'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship. No. The Bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness. Unfruitful. That means it doesn't bear fruit. There are some relationships that bear fruit. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean the people have to be perfect. I'm not talking of love relationship now. I'm just talking of general relationship. The people may have their differences just like you have your own too. Correct? People are not working with us because we are perfect. There are some of you who hate me. It's just that you like what I represent to the body. And you are receiving it in peace. Praise the Lord. Value relationships. Write it. Write it so that even after 10 years, if you are looking at your note, you will see it. Value relationships. When you see people, greet them. Greet them. Don't say I'm a pastor of social so, so ministry. So what? Huh? Greet people. You get up in the morning, you pass people, good morning. Huh? Don't look and say, you know, when I was in, in, in SS3, that's when you were writing common entrance. So what? Let me tell you, if age used to give food, some of our parents will be resting by now. Relationships. Hallelujah right financial dominion what is financial dominion we defined it but let me define it again the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability notice that word to totally when you understand that you find out that it's a journey for us the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and let's see some of the effects that they bring fear fear 
fear number two insecurity many poor people are insecure the bible says money is a defense he said a rich man's words are harsh because he believes he's defended but a poor man uses entreaties always begging a life of begging greed many people are greedy because they have not attained that state of financial dominion greed what if i give where would the money come from again so someone can be dying and you can join people to say ah you are dying what happened whereas you can rush the person to the hospital but you are saying me too what i have is not much greed self-centeredness some of the effects that financial hardship brings self-centeredness many people are self-centered and part of the reason not all of the reason but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency self-centered they don't think about anybody just me myself what i have is not much you know if it was much you would have shared but now that is more please don't disturb me i can pray for you self-centeredness unrighteousness unrighteousness many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money they've entered wrong relationships wrong marriages they have compromised given themselves freely and cheaply they've been involved in diabolic things all kinds of things because of poverty when you pay a man and say go and kill another person and i will give you hundred thousand or two hundred thousand that's terrible unrighteousness say in the name of jesus i will attain financial dominion and be free from all these things yeah. there are many people who live perpetually under fear will the landlord come and kick me out and we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like abuja and now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it hallelujah tonight we are going to be looking at the anatomy of god's economic system hmm. grant us light oh god the anatomy of god's economic system The internal workings. How does this thing work? Financial prosperity is not a mystery. It's not magic. There is a way this thing works. And tonight I pray that God will open our eyes to understand. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me have two people. I like using people for example. My brother, ah, you sat in front. Sitting in front means you have volunteered one here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now every time we examine anything, any subject in the Christian faith, you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions. There are two perspectives. Are you listening to me now? There is the world's economic system. Everybody say the world's economic system. That means the way that people in the world run their economy. This world, this system, cosmos, it has its economic system. The way people get money, the way people multiply it, the way people become rich, they have their system. But the kingdom of God also has an economic system. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, then you should understand how the system of heaven works. The Bible gives us a picture of this. It said, lay, lay up for yourself treasures where? So he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth. That a man can be in the earth realm, but he can make heavenly deposits. Are you getting my point now? This is Jesus speaking. Lay for yourself treasures. 
and he tells us the limitations of this world system he said thieves can come all kinds of things can go wrong but there is a system that has another mode of operation and so tonight we want to examine this system everybody say heaven's economy say it again heaven's economy many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church either because we have been made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity it is carnality but by now i know that every one of us here hates poverty is that true and we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is, is carnality. No, no, it's not at all. At all. There is a lot that the kingdom of God cannot, the, the advancement of the kingdom of God can be crippled when there is no finance. Hallelujah. So there are two economic systems. What's the first one? What's the first one? The world's economic system. And there is the second one. What is it? Hallelujah. Now, the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth. Are you getting my point? Because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth. And bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why does God bless? This is, this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy. Don't talk about money. Don't talk about business. Don't talk about all of these things. The first thing you need to know is why does God bless the believer? Why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom? What is the role of of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned why does god bless us when a herbalist when a man goes to meet a herbalist and he says baba i want charm say for what say i want to be rich the man gives him conditions is that true he said remember why we are blessing you and here are the conditions the day you compromise that money disappears agreed agreed and the man goes back and then things begin to work for him there is a system so why does god bless us because if you do not know why god prospers people you will misuse prosperity when it comes are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity they don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom so they get money and do lots of crazy things you know i I, I told you, I think it was last week. I don't know if I said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat, any one of them. Hallelujah. I watched a documentary how that the son of the Sultan of Brunel or so, I think one of these very wealthy billionaires. Hallelujah. His child, I think if I, if I remember rightly, about 22 years old. When he was celebrating his 22 year old birthday, the father gave him 250 million dollars as a birthday gift the wealthiest man of god in africa is worth about 190 million us dollars after years of operating this world but now one son who clocked 22 years listen to me i want to challenge you tonight the father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family will he buy food in a restaurant a man whose empire is built with gold and the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht and he brought in half of hollywood stars half praise the lord half just to come and enjoy drink beer waste away become soul hunters and he wanted to become friends with a popular one of these secular musicians and he knew that going to go and meet him the way a poor man a poor man uses entreaties and he knew that that way would not work so they measured his size and he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds and presented it 
as an offer to become his friend. Do you think it will work? At once. At once. It worked at once. Now listen. That's a lot of money spent on vanity. And the truth is, compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabout that his father had, that's a chicken change. That's pocket money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system. There are, of course, any man that does not give his life to Christ, no matter what you have in this world, you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom, you must be advancing another cause. Everybody is advancing something. Whether you know it or not. Are you getting my point? So why does God bless us? Never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion. The day you forget it, God is not entitled to bless you. Please follow me because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict. Your violation of them will cost you so much. Number one, the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why God blesses us. Number one, to live a comfortable life. I shared this during the Kingdom Wealth Summit in 2010. Number one, to live a comfortable life. That's one of the reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom. Let me say it again. God is not glorified in our poverty. Say it after me. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Say it one more time. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Now say, God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity don't just clap oh. many clapped many clapped like this this is not to make you fantasize what is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks I don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad hallelujah what is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools good schools with very good standard hallelujah there's nothing wrong living a very comfortable life you sleep in peace you wake up in peace God wants us to live a comfortable life. Now, many of us have not had the experience of that comfort. Maybe just a few of us. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be comfortable. Say, God wants me to be comfortable. I want you to believe it. No matter how you have suffered, say, it. God wants me to be comfortable. You know, some of us have suffered so much. As you are saying, it, you are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable... Let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose. Hallelujah. Poor people never have the opportunity to choose. Whatever comes, they go with it. Hallelujah. It gives you options. You can choose. And in that choosing, you will now choose according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So to live a comfortable life. Number two. This is very important. Why does God bless us in the kingdom? To finance the cause of Christ on the earth. To finance the cause of Christ. To advance the kingdom. Never forget this. This is one of the reasons why God, one of the major reasons as a matter of fact, why God blesses men in the kingdom. The world may have their system of operation, but when you are a kingdom citizen, if you want to be open to the prosperity of God and to command financial dominion, then you must understand that one of the major reasons 
why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To finance the kingdom. Finance soul winning. Bless the lives of, of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people. To better the lives of people. Hallelujah. Very important. Now I wrote something here and I want you to write it. It's God's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. I'll say it again. It is God's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. This is so important. I know that there are kingdom financiers. Those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities. But can I tell you, part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom. Say amen if you believe that. So financial dominion is not a wish. I told you it's a, it's a principle. It's a path. It has a formula. If you can walk with it, then God will honor you. Otherwise, you are not entitled. As simple as that. You may not go to hell, but you are certainly not going to be eligible. It is God's plan for every believer. It's God's desire for everyone seated and hearing me. And even for the online community, it's God's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom. Listen, we are still going to discuss other sections, but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource God gives you, there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom. It's not just a special um, a, un until you are prompted and all of that, that it is part of your life. That you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom. It is very, very important. Hallelujah. That's the second reason. The third reason why God blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a practical way. To reveal the love of God. And God so loved the world that he... That you must give your love expression in this dying world to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a very practical way to help the poor to help the hungry to be committed in charity to be committed in community projects and nation building all of these things are part of the reason why God blesses us in the kingdom that means God's blessings it's not just limited to the house of God. First the house of God, but also to give the world an opportunity to see that God is love. I wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion, beyond culture, beyond gender, and beyond social status. When you come and build a school for a community, for instance, and you say everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years teach these children whether you know them or not that's revealing the love of God when there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people, you help the needy you provide for the poor the Bible says he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord how do you borrow a rich man money? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. How many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very, very rich and maybe at a point he needs 1,000 now and he said, please give me 1,000. Will you give him? Very quick, step. who knows? Maybe as he's giving you back, he won't give you that same 1,000. So when a rich man says, please borrow me, very quickly, say, I, I have. He said, no, no, let me just say, mm, it's my own, I have. Because you know that when he's giving you back, he will say, ah, uh -uh. 
you out of this abundance so let's just take this one and you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously so the bible says when you give to the poor is the same thing as god saying borrow me money i will return it to you ah i will do goodness god every rich man blesses according to his ability that means he first looks at his ability and from that revelation he will bless you so the bible says my god this is paul speaking shall supply all your needs according to his riches praise the lord these are the three major reasons in the kingdom why god blesses us let's review it quickly number one to live a comfortable life number two to advance or to finance the cause of the of christ on earth use the word advance not finance advance advance the financing is to bring that advancement i will build my church he says and the gates of hell shall not prevail praise the lord when it was time for him to build the temple they called on people and from the abundance that they brought the tabernacle was built do you know listen let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally the bible says when israel was about to leave egypt god made egypt to give them money that was the first wealth transfer we see in the bible are you following me now this we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer so we see the first wealth transfer in scripture that overnight someone who had oppressed people for 430 years he gave them money but many of them did not know he gave them sheep and oxen so that he can sponsor their journey are you following me that journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now so financial resources were given but because they did not know why god blessed them later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource because they did not know they used the money to build an idol the gold and everything eventually they built an idol that's what a lot of people are doing every time you do not know why god blesses you will build an idol with it are you following me please this is a very important teaching. I want you to pay rapt attention. So God blesses you so that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement is not an accomplishment you satisfy these rules and god trusts you with it please understand that's why there is no boasting any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully trust and he gave unto one please come three of you look at me the Bible says, he gave unto one, what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? He gave them. He gave them. He gave them according to their several abilities. Right? After a while, he came back and demanded accountability. Write this word down, stewardship. Please sit down. Write this word down, stewardship. This is, this is, this is, a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom there are no owners of prosperity as it were financial prosperity no no there are stewards that god commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing the day you stop being a steward you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom everybody say i am a steward what does it mean to be a steward a caretaker a caretaker that means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom is to become trustworthy worthy enough that god can recommend you and can trust you there are some people who will never be rich no matter how much they pray and fast even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out you know why they are not trustworthy 
in this day and age let me tell you in this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer god is looking for distribution channels god is looking for houses men he can trust that you say lord you know i i told god something i said lord i know that many people have given in the kingdom but i want you to trust me and see what i will do for your kingdom and i mean it i'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity because there are many of us that until now all we are thinking about is just ourselves let me make quick money hammer sharp sharp marry one lady quickly have children build a house enjoy my life and go back to the village by december and say all you suffering ones how far god has been faithful if that is your mindset forget about kingdom wealth forget about kingdom wealth that you know that lord i'm a distribution center trust me trust me with insight trust me with resources trust me with capacity he gave out of trust he gave one five talent that means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well then the one with two and the one with one and after a while his point was proven to be correct because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it the one with ten multiplied it and it collected you see I said something years ago and I was accused of it I said in this wealth transfer there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of God in this country there are believers with houses estates and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom they are not doing anything for the kingdom only to get angry and talk fly around a church is saying we have a convention and maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million and that man is paying business class 2.5 right first class 2.5 and in one week he would travel four or five countries spend more than 10 or 15 million and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching when you do not take up kingdom responsibility you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom are you are you getting something right now greed self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion are you getting blessed many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping god from being a great blessing for us and to us because of our greed we are self-centered there is nothing the kingdom i can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom there are many of us here where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom i'm not talking about offering offering is is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something do you have the kingdom at heart david sat down and thought to himself he said how can i be in a royal palace made of gold there is nothing i want and my god does not have a place he said although you you are in heaven the earth is your footstool you do not need a house but me I must build you a house the tabernacle of god cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside there are many men of god living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church the carpet in their church that is twenty thousand cannot be changed don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom are you understanding what i'm saying a man will buy a car of 14 million pastor and a church is struggling with rent how much is the rent Five hundred thousand. what is it to just come and slip it in and say pastor i am a kingdom citizen i may not be a member of this church but i know why god blesses me quietly without chorusing around create a special chair for me close to the pastor are you an elder no are you a pastor no who are you i gave five hundred thousand. let me show you 
Why many people? So that when you see a man that God is blessing, don't be angry. There is a price they have paid. And it has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is a reorientation. When the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom. Notice I've not mentioned anything business. I've not mentioned anything money self. I've not mentioned entrepreneurship. Because that's what many people. This is the problem I have with a lot of success and business people. They just by cut every of these things. And they tell people open a shop. Look for 50,000 or 100,000 and it will work. You think it works like that? We will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout for your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying uh -uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined there are so many people who are so greedy every time they talk about money let me show you something read psalms 122 in niv can we get niv psalm 122 verse 9 i found this scripture years ago and it it hit my spirit i said goodness my god psalms 122 last verse verse 9 in niv is somebody getting blessed tonight God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you is your season. In the name of Jesus, what kept your family members will not keep you. There are some of us, this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say, Lord, will a Savior not arise? Will a Savior not arise? Is this how we will die? Will a Savior not arise? Many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families. The Lord brings salvation for us in the name of Jesus Christ. While they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw them, the blessings. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9. One to read. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Is that in your Bible? That means, Lord, I'm not just seeking all these millions and billions. How many cars can you enter at once? Even if you have 50 cars, you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars. You can only enter one. Is that true? So if it's just for yourself, you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you, no matter how extravagant you are. But for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, I'm seeking these billions. I'm seeking this thousands so that you can sponsor a tv program for 10 years quietly and say man of god stop thinking about money you concentrate on praying look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from god but there is no voice given to them hallelujah because of prosperity because of your house i will seek your prosperity what do you need one billion for as a person? Bill Gates is living off five percent of his wealth and he's still a billionaire. He's giving 95 percent of the wealth to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yet, with the five billion, he's still a billionaire. Do you know why God searched around the body of Christ 
and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrus's until the believers are prepared there is no not there's none on record that i know there is no man of god or minister of the gospel that i know who is a billionaire in dollars not one the closest is kenneth kenneth copeland the only person that i can say has gotten there he's not exactly a man of god is peter j daniels the man with the largest real estate company in australia what is the problem we are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer and there is nobody god tv god tv hallelujah god tv they are looking for about six to ten million dollars to complete a project for the house of god look at the people who have been blessed six to ten million brothers and sisters are there no people on earth that can give a prostitute 10 million for one night dollars i'm not talking of naira and it does not shake them all these rich men go for extravagant outings and buy one wine one one wine about maybe 10 or 20 or fifty thousand dollars one wine and they will order cartons of it and believers are here begging please begging psalm 22 verse 5 give 22 dollars five cents all these kinds of suffering something is wrong it's not listen we are not mocking them but i believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen you better believe it i believe strongly that this generation will do something we are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill and they will see how we are so separated from the blessing are you getting blessed Forbes 100 billionaires the top 100 people in the whole world there are just about maybe five or six people who are professing believers and that's the Walton family Sam Walton and all the other people most of the other people are atheists heterogeneous religions coming from wherever where is the church in this members of the Illuminati and all of this and all of that there is poverty in the body of Christ. Even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people. Let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. We live in a world where every time we are talking like this, you say there are other people. Do you know what God can do with you? He told Gideon, you are a mighty man. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Let me show you what God does. Every time there is perpetual misuse, perpetual misuse of his blessings Hosea chapter 4 verse 7 is someone getting blessed tonight you will thank God for this truth that you are hearing blessed are the ears that are hearing this don't trivialize it at all hallelujah everybody read want to read as they were increased so they sinned against me Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This is why after 30 years, a man that probably, listen, there are some things that are not caused by demons. It's how God's technology works. Hallelujah. Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything that my eyes saw, I desired. Everything that in such that insatiable lust for just everything money is a wild animal it can tear you into pieces if you don't control it that's why the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them hallelujah people make all kinds of nasty statements people say all kinds of things because they believe they have money they can hire police they can do all kinds of things
Praise the Lord. I want you to know that this is the reason why God blesses us. Never forget. Every time you get money, just know that this is why God has blessed me. There is a portion of this that is for me. There is a portion of this that is for the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you understand this, you're already in, in a very great, you are a, a landslide uh, uh, progression towards financial prosperity. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Now, please pay attention. We'll start talking about the laws now. We've seen why God blesses us. We want to see how he blesses us. Spiritual laws. Remember in our course curriculum, when I read it for you last week. Sorry for those who didn't come last week. We, we read out a course curriculum. Just, just follow. We're really sorry. I forgot to read it. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Even so, come Yeshua, come. And even so, come take your bride away. Take us into new realms, oh God. How my soul longs to see your face, my Lord. Even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. What are the laws? There are spiritual laws, brothers and sisters, that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom. Every herbalist, look at me. If you see this brother today, come my brother. If by next week, Koinonia, this guy just comes with a what? Range Rover Sports, maybe. Or whatever it is, just, just keep that one. Let's, let's hurry up. Praise God. And he brings a car and he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything. You can just look at him and say, my brother, in one week, where did you go to? You won't ask him what he did. You say, where did you go to? Somehow, we associate wealth with the spirit realm. Once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth, they say, no way, leave this guy's money home. This guy went somewhere. Not he did something. He went somewhere. So we, and that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine. Is that true? So if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich, it tells you that there are spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Bless you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, please. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. This was a condition for prosperity. And it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? Observe and do. There is something to do. There are laws to live by. It's not automatic. It's not the issue of receive prosperity. There is a dimension where prayer comes in. But I want you to know that there are laws. Everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Say one more time. There are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Let me tell you, if you do not know these laws, I don't care whether you have, you have PhD in finance and economics. You will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity. There are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school, go and get a job, do this and that. Wonderful. We'll still talk about that. But let me tell you, prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say spiritual laws. Oh, there are laws. There are laws. Just like there is the law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. If per adventure you climb a building and try to fall, that's when you will know that there is a law. Hallelujah. There are spiritual laws. The first spiritual law is the law of tithing. The law of tithing. Leviticus 27, verse 30.
Leviticus, excuse me, 27, verse 30. Everyone, please, can we read? One, two, read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. It says, all the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth. It is a tenth. Ten percent of your income. Please write. Ten percent of whatever blessing God br brings to your life. Now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance, money, currency. Because of currency now, we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say, this is my tithe and all of that. Hallelujah. The Jews were an agrarian people and because of that, that was why all of these things were written. But for us now, it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it. 10%. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm going to say something that sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it. But that's not... The Bible says obedience is better than... There are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were, were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, um, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues. We're going to discuss that. But listen, I'm telling you now, your tithe is your 10%. There is a reason why God said 10. He would have said 2 or you would have said 21 to 50 percent is your tithe. Choose anyone. It, God is very meticulous and He's exact. 10 percent is your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Malachi chapter 3, from verse 8 to 12. Another word for the law of tithing is the law of open heavens, it's the spiritual law, one of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens, not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. The law of open heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Question. Answer it. Answer it for yourself. Will a man rob God? It's an encouragement. It was a question but use it now to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Put your name there where a man is. One to go. Will Joshua Selman rob God? Some of you, as you are saying it, God is saying, you see, this is what has been happening. There are many robbers of God in the house of God. Many robbers of God. And please listen. Some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money. Let me say something. Everybody is an authority somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? A professor is an authority in his field. Not everywhere. Don't listen to garbages by intellectuals. They are not spiritual people. They don't know how heaven's economy works. You cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man. And you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It doesn't add up to them. There are many people because a man is sound intellectually does not mean he has spiritual understanding. There are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge and they take politics. Get out! 
Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand this is our area of grace. Let us function. Don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough. I know that there are abuses here and there but let me tell you the truth. Any man that is not faithful in tithing is scripturally entitled to poverty. Scripturally. The Bible says he that breaks the hedge the serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike. Are you listening to me please? So beware. There are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze, they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane. And when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven, they say it's wrong. It may not be wrong. Just say you do not understand. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? And there are many of us, especially some of us, as young as we are, we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand. We bring it into our religious mold. And once we find out that it doesn't add up, rather than with all humility, seeking to understand. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the wise men saw the star. Is that true? When they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail. But the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail. Because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is the consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. So God wants that there be abundance. That there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I'll begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a blessing. Number three. Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number 3, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number 4, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he. So that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify... They will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters. And see where the devil has been robbing you. Of your financial prosperity. The first thing that happens. Is that many believers say. If I give. Where will I get another one? 
question how did the first one come your tithing is a proof of trust hallelujah if you cannot bring out 10 percent of your money and say lord i trust you i come because i love you and i come because i know that your word is true if you're not a faithful tither don't get angry at god many of our parents get angry maybe they are collecting two or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand and they look forty thousand to go and give a pastor are we stupid like that don't turn our head this is a problem they think they are giving a pastor they think they are giving the man of god are you getting my point now what you do not know listen the bible says if you do this to the least of my people you have done it unto me when you come and give in the house of god please listen to me if you give tithe that is for the house of god and the man of god eats the tithe is between him and god God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. They've been trying to build one house for 10 years, 20 years. When the house is almost completed, somebody will do something from the village, everything will be destroyed again. The moment, have you seen families like that? The moment money enters, everybody gets sick until the last time finishes, then everybody will be fine by themselves. That's the devourer. Brothers and sisters, that's the devourer. There is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings? Some of us go and tell our parents these things in love. There are some of us here that are parents. We have children. We've not been practicing the law of tithing. I want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws. Even unbelievers give 10 percent they don't call it tight but almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10 percent of their money and they say it's for charity are you following me now if a believer plants during dry season there is every tendency that you still suffer although he's a believer is that true if an armed robber comes to plant during rainy season, the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings. This is how lots of unbelievers, they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity to make a decision. Hallelujah. We are still going to continue, but while you are seated, in the next two minutes, I want you to pray and say, Lord, grace. I've not been a faithful tighter. Don't bow your head. Pray. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. There are many of us, some of you outside, wherever you are, please, this is, the, this is a serious business. Your children, this, this adherence to these laws will determine whether 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family. Some of us, as you are hearing this right now, you may be young, but God is counting on you to break some chains. Enough is enough. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, grace. Say, Kata, ba, 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 ba. I have robbed you and I am sorry. I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. How can God rob you? God is no man's debtor. God does not rob men. Please lift your voice and pray. cry for grace grace oh god from today i make up my mind 
that I will be a faithful tighter, not out of fear, not out of religion, but out of revelation. I see that this is a key. I will teach my children how to tithe. I will teach my workers how to tithe. I will teach my family members to tithe. I will guide them and help them to be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open. No power in existence will stop the law of tithing. If you insist and say, Lord, I'm ready to comply. God is more than able. Before you begin to abuse God and insult him and say he's not helping my family. I'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes. Business without Titan will end up in failure. Ministry without Titan will end up in failure. A corporation without Titan, a, a non-Titan family, uh, they are entitled to financial hardship. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Praise the Lord. Let me say a few more things on Titan. Listen. If you are a business owner here, I want you to know that tithing does not just apply to a person. Hallelujah. When Abraham went to go and rescue Lot, right? When he came back with all of the blessings, it was not only him. He was representing many people. The Bible says in Genesis 14 that when he came back, he took a tenth of everything and brought it to Melchizedek and the Bible says Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. The great Abraham. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira as a ministry in tithing. The finance department, there is a standard rule in this place. Before we do anything with finance, the tithe comes out. When we started the school of ministry and missions, even that, no matter what we are raising money for in Koinonia, the tithe must go to God. Are you understanding this? So don't just think that these are things we are just saying. You must make up your mind. If you cannot commit to God your 10%, then it means you do not trust that He's able to bless and multiply you. You want to be a billionaire. You know what is the tithe of 1 billion? 100 million. You think you can carry 100 million and just go and give like that? We are going to pray when we are done. One of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace. Hallelujah. The giving grace the giving grace there are many people that do not have if you don't have it is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of god and just go and drop no there is a grace that was the grace that was upon the macedonian church that they gave even beyond their limits it's called the giving grace many of us do not have it we are too greedy everything that enters your hand you spend it on every kind of thing sickness disease any other thing but god hallelujah your tithe what is the storehouse very quickly let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all what is the storehouse because the bible says bring the tithe where to the storehouse the house of god so what is the storehouse really in scripture there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse. Number one. God's first idea of a storehouse from the Bible. Is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Are you getting me? The place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment. For many people. Is their local assemblies. Because you know. They are there, they are committed, they are workers in the church, and then they are giving. Number one, the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment. Primary there means the major spiritual nourishment. 
that is building your life that becomes the storehouse number two it could be a ministry not necessarily your ministry but a ministry that is committed to the works of the kingdom please get this a ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom there are people for instance that so in they are tied into maybe Benihin ministry Kenneth Copeland ministry and it's not their local assembly as it were are you getting my point now but it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning building and equipping believers listen if you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening it can affect your harvest it's in the bible it's the same thing as a farmer carrying a seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive the, the seed will not produce not because it is not good but a poor soil killed it number three now and these ones are they are special situations but i'm going to talk to you the vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual a man of god listen please I want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what I'm saying. A, it can be a man of God, a vessel. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are conditions. Are you getting me? Now, there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the Lord. Are you getting me? I'll give you an instance. Like Bishop Oyedepo, for instance. He is the president of a ministry. Aside from the tithe of the ministry, he has his own ministry. Are you getting me now? So, they can they take this tithe. They don't just go maybe to redeem or Kenneth Copeland. That vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people. Are you getting my condition now? And they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings. Abraham went to who? Melchizedek. Melchizedek was not a city. He was a man. And he brought his tithe to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him. Hallelujah. There are lots of ministries, for instance, around that by the grace of God look up to us in ways for spiritual direction and they've committed themselves. They come and they tighten koinonia here. I don't even know. This is what they are doing. Are you getting me? But I'm saying whether of these three, there are special conditions for the third to occur because there are many men of God who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say, I qualify to be the storehouse. Come and bless. I've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse. But the house of God is where you must bless. Is somebody getting blessed? These are the benefits. The first law. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night. Next week, we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation, the principle. The second law is the law of seed time and harvest. The law of increase, the law of giving. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38. Zema katala makuria damalana makuria everybody read one to read give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that he met without it shall be measured unto you again this is a spiritual law genesis 8 22 please when noah came out of the ark the Bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals. Is that true? That, those are the, that's how the animals entered the ark. Seven of the unclean, two of the clean. So when he came out, the Bible says he offered two, two of every animal. That means he offered and finished all the clean animals. How they came back is a technology we must still find out in the Bible. While the earth remained, verse 21, 21 please. Let's start from 21. 
and the lord smelled a sweet savour this was noah's sacrifice and the lord said in his heart i will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will i again smite anymore every living thing as i have done 22 while the earth that means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat god joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease has cold and heat stop as summer and winter stop as day and night stop then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work are you getting me the day these three stop that day know the law of seed time and harvest has stopped but from the day they gave birth to you till today the sun still rises sets according to our perspective here there is still cold and there is winter that means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work very very important what is the law of seed time and harvest really what is it simply put the law of giving is a law that this earth please listen very very important this earth functions by giving and receiving that whatever it is that you give there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you now i'm not talking about money when you give love you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest according to the law of god love will be multiplied and it will come back to you are you getting me when you sow seeds of kindness kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you are you getting what i'm saying that means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life you sow the seeds for that harvest oh this is so important this is not seed faith i'm going to teach you on seed faith we'll come to seed faith i'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest often called the law of sowing and reaping be not deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you reap to the flesh those who live by the sword they have sown that seed they will die by the sword are you getting what i'm saying this is a very powerful law that means everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny everything that leaves my hand goes an, as an investment into my future and the bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me that means for all the givings you have done truly if you have not received the harvest god cannot lie expect it it is coming are you following me now very very important now there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law let's run number one is offering in the house of god what you call offering the seeds that you sow when you go to the house of god what you call offering that's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest deuteronomy 16 16 please let's rush so we have to pray our time is gone offerings that you bring to the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose hallelujah he says in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle and they shall not appear before the lord empty hallelujah there is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the lord in the house of god as much as god has blessed you you should not come to the house of god empty-handed there is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of god please never give just because it's offering time 
and now you don't want to feel bad there are lots of people that come to the body of christ they come to the house of god without a predetermination they just come and they say offering time and i know it's not easy to just plan but you can train yourself hallelujah and part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering that i'm bringing for god so that when it's offering time you're not just looking 100 naira you return it 50 you return it 20 naira even the 20 you return the new one and carry one and say oh shall please you just dump the thing there and say lord at least you so no 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 let your heart be in what you are doing when i finish teaching you these principles you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom and you will see why god can punish certain people when they open their mouth castigating blessed people in the kingdom are you seeing now you see that it's not child's play there is what you must do it's not cheap it's not free offerings in the house of god number two i call them kingdom investments your givings for the building of the lord's house kingdom investments every other seed and commitment that you make so that there will be a smooth running of the activities that happen around the house of god i call them kingdom investments lay up for yourself treasures in heaven kingdom investments not necessarily that maybe like project 10,000 like this that could be but you can sit on your own and say lord i'm committing myself god is blessing me there is 50,000 coming in for me maybe 5,000 or 1,000 i'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments this is for building of the lord's house this is between you and god you see brothers and sisters let me tell you please and please don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people satan doesn't want the church of the lord jesus christ to be blessed there are natural laws we are going to talk about but your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws every unbeliever pastor they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship is that true whether they are business people or whatever once there is a project and they hear sometimes even without anybody coming they run because they understand the implication i want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it commit yourself never be in a place and you don't find something let me tell you see eh? years ago I used to play the keyboard for a ministry a man called reverend emmanuel amechi they were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to obasanjo and all of that now they came and they started a ministry in joss pastor i used to go and play keyboard for them listen nobody ever gave me one naira are you getting me i would trek from my house Maybe sometimes after I come back from my local assembly, I will go there and I will play keyboard for them. And I will play with all my heart. I was responsible for my finance and everything. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Are you getting me? Kingdom investment does not just mean money alone. Your participation. Every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom. This is practicing the law of seed time and harvest. It's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you will reap where it, it didn't say you will reap where you sowed. It said you will reap what you sowed. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta, I think, and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard, though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike or sometimes from my pocket and i will go there but i was doing it joyfully god is my witness i never complained once to say this man it was even my parents that were saying this 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 boy is a small boy what is all this one again but i was doing it joyfully but god was watching this is what happened to david 
while he was tending his father's sheep, God was seeing him and saying, I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd. Many of us, when you see certain people, you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives. There was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing, I will bless this guy. These are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake. Are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. When you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments, the building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop, time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it, and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tight of three months piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. You know, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because he knows we are humans and he's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tight. It's holy unto God. This is not to threaten you. This is just the truth. It's how the law of the kingdom works. Hallelujah. Two more and then we'll pray. First fruits. Many people have asked me so much question about first fruits. I'll just touch it briefly. This is one of the ways that we can express our givings. Now, um, look up. What is first fruit? In scripture, the concept of first fruit it was ordained by God. It was practiced by the Jews. It was not just part of the Jewish law. The concept of first fruit. Listen. This is the spirit behind the activity. If you don't understand it, even those who practice it do it religiously. Or they do it because some churches have register. All the members. If you drop your first fruit, you sign. Later they call you and say, ah, Elder, what is wrong? This is much you have not dropped anything they didn't pay you and it so happens that many churches the employers and the employees are in the same church so and the boss is part of the working committee you can't lie that they didn't pay you you see all those kind of things so let's get it very straight here does first fruit exist yes but listen is first fruit compulsory no the same way saying is bathing compulsory no but not bathing creates consequences. Correct? Are you getting me now? Your first fruit is a symbol. It's a prophetic way of honoring God and showing him, I'm sorry, that he's first in your life. Are you listening to me? First in your life. That when you take your first fruit, and now I'll, I'll explain it in details, and give the Lord and say, Lord, I'm honoring you. Maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker there are different ways that people practice first fruit others maybe january there are churches and people who their salary for january they take it to god and everything and all of that is it's not just about giving god money it's about telling god that you are first in my life are you getting the concept now 
So if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people serve very wicked people. I hate January. Every January is the time they eat our money. No. Understand the spirit behind what you are doing. Bless you. If you do not practice first fruit, it doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. It's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter. As simple as that. Are you getting me? Your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors, the kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually. First fruit. Please, never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a curse. To say, Sam, I'm waiting for your first fruit. If by next week, you don't bring it upon this altar, I will stand on this altar and provoke a curse. Please, don't let anybody confuse you. There are many people there are many men of God that are bullies. They bully members with all kinds of prophetic prophetic messages and they get it very serious. They say, I saw a vision. A curse was coming upon the church and those who did not give first fruit, they were affected and everybody just runs around and says, carry and give him, please. Just give him less rest. Everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll just leave it there. So first fruit is very important. As you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving, you see, that's why our walk in the kingdom is by faith. There are many people, their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things. So don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress. There are certain laws he's practicing. Please, are you getting me? I don't want to go into so much detail. I'm just giving you what we need here. The last one that I'll talk about is the concept of what we know as prophet's offering. People have suffered because of this thing. Let's clarify it once and for all. Is there such a thing as prophet's offering? Are you blessed tonight by what I'm teaching you? Praise the Lord. Two scriptures. 2 Kings 8 from verse 8 and 9. What is prophet's offering? Now look up. In ancient times, listen please. In ancient times, prophets or oracles of God as we know, men who communicated the counsel of God, be it from the Levitical priesthood and all of that, because they ministered in the house of God perpetually. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things, other secular activities. Things have changed now. But they did not have that opportunity. Are you following me now? And so there were ordinances from God that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of God. A true man of God to go and meet him just empty handed like that. That it does not command honor. You don't honor God. You don't honor him. Are you getting my point now? And the king said unto Hazael, listen, they wanted to, go, they were looking for, this was, um, this was, um, Heze, was it Hezekiah now? I believe. Whoever it was, the king. Praise God. <laughs> Take a present. Are you seeing it now? Take a present in your hand. Where's my present? Take a present in your hand and go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord of him saying shall I recover from this disease the king told the man don't go and meet a man of God empty handed he said take something in your hand as a sign of honor are you getting me when it was time for Jacob to enter his proof I mean for Isaac to enter um, Isaac to now bless his sons is that true the Bible says he told his son go and make me venison Bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me. Are you getting what I'm saying? The king said, take something in your hand. Don't go and meet the man of God empty-handed. So we see there that that's the concept of prophet offering. An offering, something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace 
of the servant of God. First Samuel 9 verse 3 to 13. I'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then we'll wrap up for, for today. First Samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13. This was the encounter. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So something was lost. They needed a breakthrough in their life. Please listen. I want to teach you a powerful principle. There is still the law of seed faith. We are coming there. But I want to teach you one very powerful principle. And they were lost. So they needed a miracle. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with you. Arise and go and look for the asses. Verse 4. And he passed through the Mount Ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that. But they did not find it. Verse 5. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, All that he saith cometh to pass. Now, let us go and meet him. So they were confused. They needed breakthrough in their life. Are you getting me now? This was Saul and a servant. And he said, let's go back. Our father will be worried. He said, no. In this city, there is a man of God. There is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem. He said, let's go and meet him. The word of the Lord comes to, to pass in his life. He said, peradventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. I want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient and that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings then said Saul to his servant but behold if we go what shall we bring to the man are you seeing now they knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of God just empty handed to say we have come to meet you and, and all of that he said for the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of God what have we verse verse 8 now and the servant answered Saul again and said behold I have here a ha in at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give the man of God to tell us our way are you following me and so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he called Saul an anointed Saul are you getting what i'm saying so the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of god with honor knowing listen knowing that god can use him to bless you and solve your problems now today in our day is the concept of prophet's offering applicable absolutely it is applicable it's simply the law of honor whether you call it prophet's offering or whatever is simply the law of honor let me teach you something brothers and sisters it should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of god now i'm aware that there are lots of men of god if you come and meet them and you don't have anything they don't hide it there is a basket or there is something nobody will even tell you as you are entering those who are taking you they'll say mr man all your 30,000. There are even those who have put their bill. They have suffered enough. They said, look, I won't be foolish again. Prophecy, 30,000. This and that and that. And it's working for certain people. They may not be necessarily fake, but I think it's inaccurate. Are you getting my point? Money and anointing does not mix together. People are supposed to do things out of revelation. However, on your own part, I never go and meet a man of God higher than me without. Nobody comes to my house and not get something there must be something i must insist that you take something is the law of honor there are some of us who are fond of you know and please i hope you know that i'm not threatening you and say start packing god has blessed me god doesn't owe me anything at all are you getting my point now so don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people no no my blessing is not tied to you my blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles imagine if god if i was totally dependent on you for my blessing i would have died by now <laughs> ah yeah yeah but god is faithful praise the lord do you believe what i'm sharing with you 
I will never go and meet a man of God higher than me even if he's just to greet even if he comes into a city there are men that I hear that just came into Zaria for a program I'm not even related I'll package something maybe a tie or wine or something I'll say quickly take it to that man of God just tell them I went to I, I want to greet them or sometimes I can just put recharge card quickly one five or something is the law of honor I've taught you this commanding results is the law of honor if you've been doing it stop it many of us on your way to go and see a man of god you branch a a, a restaurant chicken republic you blow five thousand there you finish eating and you belt you say hey by now let's just go and see him and you get up and come and you even sit down sir things are not changing you say god will bless us and you know i'm not talking of me it's, it's very bad it's dishonoring very dishonoring so while on one side we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift it means the anointing will not flow he will not bless you that's erroneous but let me encourage you i want to encourage you have it as a spiritual culture beyond koinonia you will provoke lots of things there are places i go to minister and i tell you the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me i find out that there are unusual open heavens even certain things that i don't want to share i find myself sharing it a seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people he said honor your father and your mother he said law honor people hallelujah praise the lord many of you have never blessed a man of god see i say this is just because i have to teach you you don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night i've said it and said it some of you don't even know our birthdays you don't even know my birthday to say kai this person is doing all of this some of you try to call and i caught the call and for one hour you're just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise and you are not wondering you know this very unemotional attitude there are many families like that they gather their whole family we are coming for deliverance we are coming for this and the man just comes where do i sit down and they sit down the wife too sits down demons are disturbing us in this house we had that uh, is it the deliverance ministry or what is it and you know they are talking is very wrong very wrong no man honor the man of god in scripture and did not have anything you are not buying the miracle but i'm telling you it's a law that will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings when jacob brought the venison for isaac when he took off the venison it provoked a blessing from within him hallelujah i've shared with you my story on how i packaged a very dangerous seed and i left to canaan land hallelujah i went to go and honor god's servant here i didn't get to meet with him but i still went to practice that law of honor and without contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater when i came out from there praise god when i came out from there i was to enter the car and the holy ghost told me come out and i came out he said kneel down i laid my hands there he said from today every city you go the heavens will be open to you the same way you are seeing it here so when you see a reproduction of certain things understand that there are laws that work there are people who keep criticizing because we are flying our shed they just look how are these people doing it these guys they must be fetish that's why you see certain people bring judgment on themselves you were not there when we were praying the price but you now see the reward and begin to criticize are you getting what i'm saying there are spiritual laws there are spiritual laws one of the reasons why this ministry will never go down is because we sow into your life there are bosses here you know sometimes people ask me they say why do you spend so much money on bosses you don't want to know how much we spend per week just on bosses chairs outside and the rest sometimes i come and i rebuke the protocol people and i tell them why are there some people standing go and get more chairs hallelujah and they order dozens of chairs again and they still need more i say still go and get it it's the law of honor that i'm a man i don't know what grace you carry 
is everybody sitting here you are a bank of grace it's a privilege that i'm standing here ministering to you i will be foolish to believe that you don't carry something many of you are product of different anointings some people have spoken certain blessings into your life as a ministry we are humble enough to tap into it and we tap into it by sowing into your life are you listening to me when we wanted to contact the spirit of excellence as a ministry we looked at Koza, the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, and we looked at them and we found out that these guys had a level of excellence we wanted. We carried all the leaders, all the heads of departments, and the ministers and myself. We went to Abuja. Some of you were there. We lodged in a very expensive hotel. It cost us so much, but it was the law of honor. Let me tell you, when we got to Koza there, we went and we humbled ourselves. Our head of department, media, went to meet their head of department and walked there. Our head of protocol went to meet their head of protocol and walked there. Are you getting me? Oh no. And of course, we cannot go empty-handed. We went there. When we finished everything, the pastors came and the senior pastor came. They just humbled themselves. I can brag and say, look, I'm a man of God. I'm, I, I'm seeing on common demonstrations of the spirit. There is always something you do not have. You must learn how to receive it. And we went and we humbled ourselves there and they spoke to us. We have seen certain levels of excellence, but when we came back, we came with a spirit and an anointing. Many of you have missed out on many anointings because you dishonor men of God. You are not... See, the way many pastors suffer in many ministries. God blesses you. Ministers are here suffering, speaking over your life. Let me tell you, if you know how much research and the things we do to bring these materials, while you are sleeping, we are awake. The Bible says, he that ministers to you in spiritual things. You should minister to the person in carnal things. The carnal there doesn't mean fleshly. Make it a, a point, a duty in your life. That everywhere you find yourself and there is a man of God there. Practice the law of honor. As much as possible. Please don't feel bad from today to say, okay, you are coming to greet me. I don't have anything. Don't feel guilty at all. Are you getting me? But I'm teaching you. There are many people who don't have the means sincerely, but I'm teaching you is a law. Begin to practice it. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one time I went for a ministration in, in a particular city. I won't call it because there are so many people downloading the teachings. And I was so humiliated. Pastor, I felt so bad. I said, Lord, this is not fair. When I went to that city where they kept me, I was going to ask the people and say, please, where is... A very good hotel here let me relocate and book for myself and stay i didn't come for slavery here to come and stay here for god's sake it was a horrible place when it was night one sister just entered quickly as if i'm going to sleep with her bam 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 she just pushed the drawer drop everything and ran away i said what is all this when she brought listen i'm trying to communicate a point she brought this whole thing and i just sat down i greeted her she didn't even answer dropped everything and then she sped out I opened it. They made indomie and one egg with la casera. I had spent that day. It was a very far city. I said, Lord, is it that I could not take care of myself? You have been faithful to me. What is all of this? I don't take indomie. I don't take la casera. Listen, I need to say this. If this is all I say, we'll, we'll round up now and pray. There are many of you who want to invite a man of God. Don't bring a man that your, your financial, if you cannot honor his grace, be patient. There are so many people that want to bring men of God. I want to bring this. We must bring this person. You are not ready to cater and take. You bring any man and humiliate him. You will bring war on yourself. I'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle. I had to go and buy malt that night. I just bought malt, I took it, I gave thanks and honestly I was not offended. Praise God. The next day nothing, there was no breakfast, they didn't ask whether I'm fasting or I want to eat. Later they just came, they said we have come. The car, they carried me, they chartered one car, at least do something presentable. Are you getting my point? It was hot, it was horrible, I was humiliated. I said, goodness, what is this, oh God? I said, well Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm. I went and it was a great meeting god blessed all the people i paid my flight ticket from here to the place and i did everything when i finished by afternoon they brought okra soup for me and something you know they just came and dropped it you know this this 
um, this cooler, this wonder, this small one. That's what they just came and dropped. And we have three or four pure water or something. I said, what is this? I'm not exaggerating. It was a humiliating experience. And I spent three days there. On the third day when I was done, I was happy. I laughed. Do you know what happened? I, I want to tell you the pain of many ministers and what has made some people to do certain things. Don't just sit down and criticize and say they are materialistic. Your power is real. I testify. Your power is real. How then do you know the favor of God is real? Listen, 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 listen. Your faith must grow to trust. The difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on God's integrity. Are we together now? It, uh, on who God is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if I'm meeting you for the first time Dr. Emeka and they tell me you are a doctor I will have faith in you I can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you I will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and I cannot walk, what should happen to you? When you give me an injection, I am fine. Then I come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works. I begin to note you and associate you with my joy. And then eventually I conclude that this man is worth my belief. This man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. Trust in the Lord. How do you trust in the Lord? Take cognizance of his benefits. Be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust a testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that God is able. Take your eyes away. I repeat, take your eyes away. Please take your eyes away from anything that is not Jesus tonight. And focus. Apostle, they've prayed for me. A prophet just like you prayed for me. An apostle just like you prayed for me. A pastor even conducted night vigils in our house. I know and I respect God and I respect the grace upon that man. Except that one more thing I did not teach you about the anointing. Is that not every anointing blesses you. The man must be sent. There were many widows in Zarephath. But to none was Elijah sent. When the word of God passes you, it does not bless you. It is when it is sent. He sent, not brought. He sent forth. It was when the king sent for Joseph that his life changed. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything. Not when you moved around. When I sent thee. Because every time he sends it, his integrity is upon it. Tonight, God is sending his word to me to you to us the word that lifts the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce 
is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life I would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight hmm. it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken Two men met Jesus in M house and they began to discuss the Messiah and he was there with them but they could not see. And then when he broke bread, the Bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed. My assignment is to continue to study continually by the Spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of god's power the power of god can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget It doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafer does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when i'm using only bread and cup the power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem and whatever comes out of it can produce any result a handkerchief and an apron is not even alive talk more of having faith but when his divine power comes upon it it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders the air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of god then it is no longer the words of man john said i am the voice of one so when you hear me you hear that one hmm. hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast Shananda Prakatos Shekete Prekete Baladabash. Go ahead and pray, please. Inside, outside. Lift your voices and pray. Are you praying? Lord, I believe it is your divine power. Now I know how the results will come. Your divine power. I know how the lifting will come. 
your divine power. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Senekatabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Senekebrash. And the lega brande zedika shobra gada baladabash, krato zazi gada barunde ketosh, embra kato zale ke pradish, shebra di kafosh, rakato bari ada baladabash, rakato bari indes ke meritash, rakapa rudasi ada baladabash, he barando zale karusi ada baladabash. Please keep praying. Hela baranda zazia hasa barando kate prekedi balaraba. Hallelujah. John chapter six. John chapter 6 we'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56 John chapter 6 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead next verse this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, not is like my flesh. Is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. 52. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Stop here. Just, just go back. Just go back. This is what he's saying. That in the flesh of the Son of Man and in the blood of the Son of Man is his life. That the life of the flesh is in the blood. Are we together now? Listen very carefully. So that when you partake, please keep that scripture. When you partake of it with understanding, the Bible says that you are not just taking a wafer, you are not just taking a drink, but that you are, you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of God. Next verse. 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, had, I told you the word there is not eternal life. It's the word zoe. It's not the longevity of the life, but the quality of the life. And I will raise him up on the last day, 55. We're stopping at 56. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The last verse. He that eateth my flesh, this is it, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. 
this is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one the same mystery in marriage the same mystery with the spirit of god so that by the mystery of partaking in the communion that means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and god's body are we together now yes let me tell you what that means come look at this emeka come watch this if this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong his strength is her own too you understand that are you getting me not part of his strength his strength so if you say she's strong you are right are we together now this is very important now that means that when she's strong and he's weak her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just tear open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the Christ please pray by wisdom oh God heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the season creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing but i can't Blessed are you, O Lord our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words bring in the evening. Please pray in one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary wafer and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. It says anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it. It didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. 
I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here I decree oh God that in a very strange way may your power flow through this in the name of Jesus let it bring miracles let it bring all kinds of deliverances in the name of Jesus whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of Jesus I declare instantly may your power begin to rest upon them let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus let deliverances let devils and demons begin to leave let doors begin to open in the name of Jesus Christ my flesh is meat indeed we partake with understanding we partake with understanding please make sure everybody something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this you will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion Go ahead, take it with faith and watch the wonder-working power, the wonder-working power of Jesus, the wonder-working power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Whoa. Please be patient tonight. God is setting people free. 
when there is understanding to your spiritual activity then the power is released the power is released you will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already mm. my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now, I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd, inside and outside, everybody under any kind of bondage, I decree, be free now. Be free now. I command judgment on strange spirits. In the name of Jesus. The spirits of ancestry, the workings of bloodlines and territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Listen, we're still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. The Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school. It doesn't make any difference. You can get a job. It doesn't make any difference. Have a business. It doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? Inside and outside. I declare right now. The power of God is coming upon you. 
it's time for your family to be released at the count of three one two three be free now be free now be free now i lose your family i set them free i set them free Surely there is an end, the Bible says. Surely there is an end. Even weeping endures only for a night. I declare freedom on those families now. I declare freedom. Shapas kote barakata. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. Samarakato zegedesh. Ila banda rahas kabaruka to shadekata paruza ziana kata brekete la kuziana mas krate na zazia makatosh. You rise to a level and then you crash back. It's a pattern that exists in families. There's nothing wrong with rising. Keep rising, but you plateau at a level and then you crash back. I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God, I decree and declare the spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus. I release such people right now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. The Lord is showing me something happening in Overflow 3. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. Mighty God. Mighty God. I see a lot of attacks. Serious attacks on Overflow 3. I don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there, I'm seeing a lot of attacks. At the count of 3, Overflow 3. I want you to shout the name Jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there. Overflow three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside. The gate of a prison like the front of a prison and I remember scripture says to open to set at liberty them that are bound there are people who are moving but are in prison all sorts of prisons right now I decree and declare even by the power of the Holy Ghost let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage I declare that those chains are loose now. I declare that those chains are loose now. And for all those in front here, representing all those that I'm praying for, I declare not only that the spirits leave you, but that whatever they took from you, as surely as the God of heaven leaves, your families must testify of that restoration. Therefore, leave them now. Go, go. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus, release their families. Release their spiritual lives. Release their finances. Paradox is a hasaka paradosia. Lembra ghetto scalaricious Hebras Kodash Prakato Baradu Zaziana Katabaladash Hallelujah Praise the Lord 
please this road lift your hands I just see angelic activities happening here and I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs this is what I'm seeing here something is being removed out of people's stomachs that's what the Lord is showing me just this row I don't know what it is but God is uprooting something that should not be there by the Spirit of the Living God let it go let it go in the name of Jesus I place the Word of God upon that situation it must let you go right now the Lord is taking something out I still continue to see this vision God is taking something out of people's stomachs the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty I'm seeing the feet of a man and I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains under chains this is what I see and the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet. I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families. And I declare right now, according to that which the Lord has shown me, in the name of Jesus, that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position, right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, right now something is happening to people. I decree, I decree, and I declare. Let there be liberty now. Inside, outside, let there be liberty. Right now. Let there be liberty, liberty. I command progress to your life. Move forward. I push you by prophecy. Move forward. Make progress. Move forward. Make progress. I forbid stagnation. Move forward. Make progress. I don't know how to pray this prayer now those who are fine up here can return to their seats I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people you don't have to bring the people out I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer and my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power. Moving in this place, we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Please someone to join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no 
there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life if not that it happened I know there is advancement and I know there is speed but I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter truly let me tell you there is a real grace for speed and when that grace comes on you you will join the world in shock as to what becomes of your life and the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer. The reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer, people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit. I don't know why it happens that way. Be sensitive, please. And then it is of the spirit. Please don't ask me why it happens that way. But if you will let me pray this prayer tonight, God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month i know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments i decree and declare by the privilege of god's grace i stretch my hands inside everywhere overflow one two three online father i pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three, come upon someone. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I shift you. Speed. 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 Speed to your spiritual life. Speed to your finances. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed upon your influence. This is a major answer to your prayer. I declare it again. Speed. Speed. Receive it. Receive it. It is not by might nor by power. But by the spirit of God. You can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit. And do things that eyes have not seen. That ears have not heard. I pray it again. Those outside receive it. Those outside receive it. I declare speed. In the similitude of Elijah. You will run and you will overtake the chariots of Ahab. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually this woman you are seeing as frail as she may look but the hand of god will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of god with power i stretch my hands upon you and i pray that the spirit of god will perfect let there be a bathing a bathing of the things that he has begun upon your life a bathing of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands i don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that god is bringing upon your life number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what i hear number two this speed that you see i prayed for is coming upon you i stretch my hands may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration 
let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people the time will be gone we have to honor it so that we can do some other things who is that rebecca Please, when you find the person I want to talk to her in the name of Jesus Christ we are going to pray for the sick Kai. this woman is outside you are not inside you are wearing a red like wrapper on your head the same with what is down on you Confirm it. Mama, your name is Rebecca. Where are you? From outside? I will pray for you now. I don't know you. I've never seen you, but I want to pray for you. The Lord is going to honor you. I decided to take a pause because um, the Lord just asked me to stand here. That's why I'm standing here. I'm standing here because I saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you i found the person i'm ministering to but i'll pray for you from where madam from where from area c area c yes sir. i want to pray for you what's wrong with your back back pain yes, yes, this is what i'm true. seeing you it's get up true, in the morning and, true. and then you feel a lot yes, of pain sometimes yes. you cannot even wash yes, yes. number two your chest too yes, it's true. severe it's chest true around the breast region yes, true, the lord is setting true, you free right now yes, madam in the name of jesus let it be over right now and forever in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ ah, i just had like a car crash in my ears you know how an accident just happens right now this is what i just had in my ears and that the family that that should happen for is in this place i'm going to pray right now be free now i command death you are a spirit i judge you by the god of heaven and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage i want to pray for you madam in the name of jesus christ that god himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh? here. your children are here yes. where are they patient Isaac patient Isaac and Sarah this may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick there's a lot patience and Isaac now only glow no day here let me just pray for you if, if you are the only one who can represent them stand up please my friend mama i will pray for you in the name of jesus christ because i'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family the lord himself is bringing it so a very major breakthrough i have no business saying anything god did not tell me i've not prayed the prayer yet yet you are receiving it is the grace for favor the grace for favor the grace for favor this man will be like a well watered garden that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you ma please hold my hands in the name of Jesus the breakthrough that the Lord shows me 
let it come and come speedily in the name of jesus christ you are her daughter let me pray for you my dear in the name of jesus christ they will not say there is something in your stomach growing huh i'm rebuking something they will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach i just laid my hands and god is healing someone in overflow one oh, please hold on there is a growth there is a growth there is a growth this has been characterized by extremely painful your period is extremely painful but more than that there is a growth just around your abdominal area overflow one you don't have to come out the power of god is touching that person right now in the name of jesus christ my dear in jesus name by the spirit of the living god we declare your liberty complete total final in jesus name i pray praise the lord now we're going to pray for the sick praying for the sick takes a lot of time our time is already gone i i bless god that there are a number of hands tonight now listen we believe in the power of god to touch people to lift people and most times you would notice in my external ministrations i don't have time to minister to people one by one but because this is a miracle service dedicated for that the lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city and it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of god extend to people we'll do it very fast um all of the overflows all of the overflows i would request that you just move those trusting god for healing particularly please i would request that you move to the front of your projector screen that's where you are going to be prayed for um the ones that spill over do i call that overflow five now i will just request you to be patient we're going to assign a person or two there to minister to you but overflow four three two one and right in here you are here you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the god of heaven to set you free you are here full of faith please stand up please stand up if you kneel there will not be space just come stand it doesn't matter you don't have to come in if you're outside just go to your overflow please hallelujah myself alongside the men and the women of god represented here will be praying for you look how many people are trusting god to touch them hallelujah now please you don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak just let them minister to you if there is need to speak any words they will let you know praise the lord there are so many people this night and so we'll do our best so we can gain time and just just line everybody here and then we'll pray for you praise the lord prayed for just be patient and allow the men of god minister to you while that is happening our time is already gone please stretch your hands if you've not submitted your request um you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you especially for those outside you're yet to submit your request just stretch your hands right here and let us agree this hold on please this is not religion this is not tradition this is not a ritual this is a mystery it's a revelation let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service because when we have the form without the power then it will not bless us there have been many many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here and um, since I'm the only one here let the men of God minister to you if you are still being ministered to just focus on the ministration but then for all others just stretch your hands towards me and let's agree that these Egyptians we see today that we will see no more please agree release your faith and believe we are praying we may not be able to prophesy to you personally we may not be able to give you a word of knowledge 
but this is a representation of your heart your pain your desire your expectation the bible says and thine expectation shall not be caught short stretch your hands and let's agree there is a god that answers prayers is someone praying online pray the overflows pray father we declare we are declaring as the church we are releasing and anointing the divine power of god upon these requests some of these requests are death sentences some of them are humanly impossible situations but unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come zakosh kamaranda kaparuza zekata paria katala kosia jekes kebranda katopra asada katabala dabaka rekete katabarada bakato barato zaziana kata shkala baranda kaparuza ziana kata in the name of jesus we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people we decree and we declare makratos kalambre de keparuza ziakata bradias ile pereto zaziakata baranda gadash kritos kalabarakata balana bush shalabaranda kapuros we decree and we declare manda prados kaziza hashkala baranda kata arise for your people by the abundance of your mercy give your people testimonies in the name of jesus jiprakatos kalabarakata believers pray we are agreeing likato janana kata barados Jabros katabaranda kata supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power hela barakata soza brende gedebash lord in the name of jesus we declare supernatural walkings of miracles tonight we declare healing miracles. We declare miracles of provisions. We declare miracles of jobs. We declare sentences of death are broken. In the name of Jesus. We declare supernatural interception. Angelic interventions tonight. We declare diverse kinds of miracles. Diverse walkings of miracles. In the name of Jesus. We declare creative miracles. We call new organs. We call new jobs. We call for children. We call for deliverances of families. We declare miracles on every side. Let tears of family be wiped away. In the name of Jesus. We declare diverse testimonies tonight. By the workings of miracles by the divine power of God in the name of Jesus thank you father father we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your the heavens are open in the name of Jesus we thank you for creative miracles we thank you for money miracles we thank you for supernatural deliverances we thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father, Lord, we thank you for the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive answer to every prayer request here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus. Special miracles in the name of Jesus. 
diverse kinds of testimonies uh, in the name of Jesus. Angelic interventions uh, in the name of Jesus. Supernatural supplies uh, in the name of Jesus. Great open doors uh, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. Uh, in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared, it is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. We must do the impartation. We have been fasting. We have been praying. And we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ. We are always looking for people to lay hands on. Always looking for people to prophesy on. So every time we talk about an impartation, there is hardly an expectation. But a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them. But please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the quality of your secret place, you will need impartation. There are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place. You will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. The grace, you don't have to kneel. Please, you don't have to kneel. The grace that makes for a new level of visions people have lost visions in the body of christ we tell lies that we are seeing but we are not seeing anything father the eyes that see genuine visions let there be a restoration let that mantle fall upon someone right now in the name of jesus christ the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. That prophetic river locked up within your spirit. In the name that is above all names. The grace for the prophetic in a new dimension. Who is this grace coming upon? Mabato Zabarakata Embreketeta upon all flesh, he says, I will pour out my spirit. Receive that anointing now in the name of Jesus. I believe in miracles, and I believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders. I'm stretching my hands. I'm seeing a dove. This is what I'm seeing. Just like a bird hovering round. In the name of Jesus Christ. Upon as many whose hearts are open. Father the anointing. The real anointing. For signs for wonders. Pari gato shalentara makata. Brakatos kebarata. Inside, outside. Especially upon men and women of God. I decree and declare. Let this grace for signs and wonders fall upon you now in the name of jesus fall upon you now for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group i say it again for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group receive it in the name of jesus the spirit of wisdom there is a spirit of wisdom It says, doth not wisdom cry. Wisdom speaking says, with me are. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. I declare, the grace to know what to do is called the spirit of wisdom. The grace to know what to do. Let it come upon you right now. Let it come upon you right now. Let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now. 
let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now Please help those under the anointing. Tala barus kanama hashanas. Rata kapaluza ziadas. I want to release favor. The grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom. There is a grace for favor. I testify to you people of the living God there is a grace for favor it is not of him that run it nor of him it is not of him that that um, run it what's the scripture we net not of him that run it but of the Lord that showeth mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion and the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her yea the set time favor will take away hardship from your life not just financially even spiritually i decree and declare receive the grace for favor it's coming upon you receive the grace for favor receive the grace favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business in the name of jesus every geography has its favor may the favor associated with your geography if it was on the rocks the king built on the rocks it was an advantage if it was the sea they channeled the water for productivity every territory has access to favor i declare that the favor a portion for your territory let it rest upon you right now i want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery let me tell you this i confess to you sincerely under god that by the privilege of god's grace i'm a student of the word but i can tell you this no matter how frequent you read this there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see otherwise sometimes you will see but what you will see is error sometimes what you will see will deceive you i'm praying for you we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit but as it is right now you open scripture and you don't see anything all you continue to do is copy the messages of men of God verbatim I declare that a unique grace for revelation let it rest upon you right now access inside access inside access inside into the mysteries of the kingdom this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness I believe there is a grace for wealth I believe it I believe there are principles for wealth I believe there are understandings that can bring resources but I believe there is a grace there is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings when that grace came upon Saul three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one in the name that is above all names in this season that God has ordained for the body that in addition to the prosperity of our souls in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus i believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it don't touch this one there is something upon it i decree and declare let the mark that exempts men from terrorism from kidnapping from assassination from accidents 
the grace that exempts receive it right now for you and for your family receive it right now receive it right now I declare that whatever you have lost coming here it doesn't matter how long please believe release your faith right now in the name of Jesus Christ I command a sevenfold restoration I command a sevenfold restoration restoration of anointings of money of ideas of relationships of access of illumination in the name of Jesus I pray for every ministry represented here whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders I declare by the power of the Spirit shift to a new dimension shift to a new dimension of teaching of the miraculous of the demonstration of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I will multiply them they will not be small I will glorify them they will not be few whatever keeps you small in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that power is broken over you now all those trusting God for jobs here yeah. you are trusting God you have agreed with God and said Lord settle me give me an honorable job I release my faith with you and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that by this time next month let it please the Lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business Father, the grace that came upon Tyre and Sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth, I decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value, the grace, the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to every dying business here. Hear the word of the Lord. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, whether for you or for your loved ones, we agree by the power that put Jesus in the womb of Mary. In the name that is above all names, is called the power of the highest that can put a seed in the womb of a woman. And keep that seed until it delivers. May that grace and that power come upon you now. We cause barrenness. We cause impotency. In the name of Jesus. Whoever has what it takes to favor you. The Bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power. I declare whoever has the power to support you. The power to help lift you. We compel them by the spirit to favor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the name of Jesus. We are rounding up the prayer and fasting. Many of you have stretched your capacity spiritually. I declare. The fire of prayer that can burn an incense and cause it to reach heaven in the name of Jesus every attack on your prayer life let the seven lampstands of your prayer life be lit back right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive the grace to travail Receive the grace to pray. Any evil and wicked company and association around your life. You are not free till your association is free. I declare to you, you may be nice but you are surrounded by wicked people. 
who do not fear God, I declare a separation between you and the wicked. I declare right now divine direction for people who are saying Lord what is the next step in this season should I stay here or should I go the Bible says and thine ear shall hear a voice listen let me tell you one mistake to miss the will of God can cost you years before you return I declare accuracy of perception in the name of Jesus Christ that the God of heaven will give you peace by all means in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we are done thou shall anoint Aaron and his sons and thou shall put upon him some of your honor honor is a grace it is transferable honor can be put upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ it says therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows this is not in a competitive manner but I pray for you the grace that distinguishes men from the crowd may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. Let it be from tonight that miracles and testimonies that you have never seen in your life, we release them. Listen, listen. Noah released the dove from the ark after the rain. It returned back as proof that it did not have a resting place. Then he waited a while and returned and it came back with a little olive an almond tree, an olive plant as a sign that life was restoring he sent it back the third time and it did not come back again this is how testimonies are they can be sent and they return because the condition for them to stay is not there and then they return again and say the anointing is now being introduced in that life and by the third time they are ready to be established i pray for you every long-standing testimony that has already been released from the throne and for whatever means has refused to be established in your life i declare right now in the name of jesus let that testimony manifest in your life now let that testimony manifest in your life now. Anyone that says over his dead body for you to succeed, may God answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for all of those who have come from far. I agree with you. I release my faith. Whether for the miracle service tonight or all through the prayer and the fasting. I agree. The same way Moses tabernacled upon the mount and returned with the radiance of the glory upon his face. Return with the grace to prove that you met God. Return with the testimonies that prove that you met God. Return with the signs, the wonders, the transformation, the illumination. Return with the evidences of an encounter. In the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. I sincerely apologize. But we thank the Lord for the encounter tonight. You will live to testify. Very quickly, please let's, let's settle down. Very quickly, 
please just help that woman so she doesn't injure anyone there are people here please listen overflow one two three four online there are people here who probably have been attending the conference or just came in here tonight and whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the things that the lord did in this place the holy spirit began to convict you that you need jesus jesus is not an idea jesus is not something and someone you can do without i believe with all my heart that and please prepare to clear the way for them overflow one two three if you are at the door please shift there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle if you will make an altar call i need jesus i need him desperately i need him truly there are others who are saying i love jesus but for whatever reason i need a restoration and i need my life back with him whether you belong to any of these categories please inside and outside i'm only going to count five don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here it will be my joy and delight to lead you to jesus don't wait for someone to come before you be the first i'm counting one come quickly come quickly koinonia let's honor them let's motivate them as they come please clear the way for those who are coming from outside two apostle I'm, I'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them join them join them join them i come from a christian family am i born again no sir join them i have very good friends am i born again no sir join them The Lord is still talking to someone. I would want to come, but I'm afraid of my friends and those we came with. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. I believe the Lord is still speaking to a few people. If you're coming, please come quickly. Young, old, make your way. Let tonight be your night of salvation. He says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Today, if you hear his voice do not harden your heart hallelujah if there are any ones coming just allow them to quickly come i appreciate every one of you for making this bold decision please mean it sincerely and truthfully lift your right hand and say after me believing that jesus is here say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight I receive your life I receive your grace and I declare please help them and I declare that salvation is mine new life is mine from today till forever Jesus is my Savior is my Lord is my friend I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life amen may the Lord bless you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus I'll see you again Bye.